Official. I hate this reality. I wish I could just jump into a new one, like the paintings from Super Mario 64 or the twink from Ready Player One. Ooh, company! and Sop still made Mario parties. <sighs> I guess it's a once a year thing. Hey there, and welcome to New Location McGee. Uh, me and old Location McGee had a bit of a falling out after a particular eviction notice, but that doesn't matter now. I'm in a new room! The acoustics in here suck! But that doesn't matter, because thanks to a particular stroke of luck and had definitely had nothing to do with a holiday that happened fairly recently, I have this to talk about. Virtual reality, or VR for short. Virtual reality, as amazing and revolutionary as it sounds, is actually not that new of a concept, not by a long shot. Some of the first known examples of VR date all the way back to 1838. Since then, VR has evolved from just looking at simple images or video to playing as things like a hot dog with a gun. Truly the peak of human evolution. Ever since VR truly became a thing, it was mostly just used as a learning tool for scientists. But in 1987, a company would make virtual reality not just a learning tool, but also a way to play video games. And that company was Nintendo. I bet you didn't see that coming. It was called the Famicom 3D System. Nowadays, it's seen more as a step in the development of the 3DS, but it did allow users to play games in a close-up 3D environment. Sort of. The 3D system was only compatible with a handful of games and never left Japan. In 1988, Sega would attempt to do something very similar, but it flopped, and in 1991, Sega would try to do VR again, but the headset never released, even though four compatible games were actually released. In 1995, Nintendo would release the Virtual Boy. This was probably the first true VR gaming experience, but unfortunately, the console flopped. The Virtual Boy was marketed as the next console in the Game Boy line, and in the eyes of Shigeru Miyamoto, this was the worst thing they could have done when it came to marketing something that was more of a novelty rather than a game console. But Miyamoto had no say on anything for that system because at the time he was working on the Nintendo 64 and Super Mario 64. After the Virtual Boy, virtual reality would creep back into the video game world here and there, but it wouldn't see a big resurgence until 2012 with the launch of the Oculus Rift. The Rift created such a boom in fact that in 2014 Facebook bought Oculus for $2 billion. Now there are tons of companies making headsets nowadays. Some of the biggest ones are Valve, Meta, and Sony, just to name a few. When it comes to owning VR headsets, I happen to own two. One of them is the extremely popular Oculus Quest 2, and the other is the Utopia 360. Okay, I'm just gonna get the Utopia 360 out of the way first. Back when VR started to get extremely popular, companies like Samsung and Google started making mobile phone VR headsets. These were budget headsets with nothing in them. You were supposed to put your phone inside and download apps to use with the plastic shell. Now when it comes to the ownership of my Utopia 360, I don't remember when I got it or what I got it for, but I do remember what it came with. 
a Bluetooth controller that reminds me way too much of a particular Nintendo accessory. I thought the guy at GameStop said this thing was wireless. I think Annie never specified that it was for the Wii. It's cool that this cheap plastic shell from my phone came with a controller, but the controller feels even more cheap than the headset. And because most VR games that released on mobile devices are extremely basic, 9 times out of 10, the controller has no support. Yeah, this thing isn't very good, but back when VR first started becoming extremely popular, a lot of people wanted to actually experience VR, but nobody wanted to fork over the hundreds of dollars for a headset, software, VR compatible hardware, I mean, that's a lot of money. And this thing was honestly fixing a real problem that people had. The only problem is, is that fairly recently these things got outclassed. Get out of here. You too. The Oculus Quest 2, everybody's favorite little market killer. When the Oculus Quest first came out, the mobile phone VR market had pretty much ceased to exist, snapped from reality, slaughtered and thrown into a ditch. Say whatever you want. This thing obliterated it. Yellow. If you say anything bad about this product, we have your address. Yeah, sure you do. Hey, didn't you dare hang up on you? Jerk. I mean, why would I say anything bad about the Oculus Quest? This thing is amazing. It's cheap. It's affordable. I mean, my only problem with it is that the battery is just a little too short for my liking. But I mean, literally, other than that, no problems. I love this thing. The Oculus Quest is probably the best VR headset money can buy. The Quest has the ability to play games wirelessly, it also has its own UI and store so that you can just download games straight to the system without a cord. But you can also buy a cord so that you can play games off of a PC from a platform like Steam. The controllers are also super comfortable and have a stupidly long battery life. Because I've only had this thing for about a month, I haven't experienced everything that the Oculus Quest has to offer, but what I have seen so far has gotten to be one of the coolest gaming experiences ever. Except Minecraft and VR, I got super sick while playing that. You said something bad about our product and I told you I had your address. Prepare to suffer. Oh no 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 no. I am not getting shot again. Stinky lizard man! All I said was that the battery could have been better.